Hey everybody, it's Ian the off Kilter Crafter. I hope you're having a great day today. Today I'm going to be talking about two different quilts that I created using technology or incorporating technology into those quilts. Um, I'm brand new to the quilting world and I'm coming at the quilting world with a completely different mindset from more traditional quilting. I did join a modern quilt guild. It's actually the Fort Worth Modern Quilt Guild. I'm going to give them a shout out. So if you're from the Fort Worth Modern Quilt Guild, hi ladies. Um, and I really, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm coming from a completely different mindset. I'm coming from like a technology side of things and wanting to incorporate technology not only in the creation of the quilt, but also into the quilt itself. I definitely had some pushback, I guess, would be the right way to put that. There was definitely some curiosity and some uh, not understanding exactly what I'm doing with this whole quilting idea and incorporating the technology into it. So today is going to be more of a show and share type of video. So if you're not interested in that type of video, I totally understand. But I wanted to kind of get the word out that there is some new types of quilting and some new techniques coming to the soft craft world. The first quilt that I want to talk about today is this one right here. I ended up titling this quilt Proof of Concept version 1.0. Basically this is, as the name hints to, it's a proof of concept. I wanted to put this quilt together and show, prove to myself that I could actually do this type of soft craft and conductive thread incorporating quilt. And um, I also knew that when I put this into competition or in judging that there would be some curiosity about it, there would be some pushback about it, that it's not your typical quilt at all. So what I did is I used conductive material, conductive thread, and a makey makey to put this together. And I'm going to demo this a little bit here in just a second, but I wanted you to kind of get the idea of what it's all about. It's a smaller quilt, so it's not a very big one because the first quilt I made, I didn't want to be like a king-sized one. We couldn't go that big with it. So it's just kind of a manageable size that you you get used to and, and it's easy to deal with, basically. Um, this can be sewn on just a regular sewing machine. In fact, it was. I have to give a huge shout out to um, Trish for being my quilter on both of the projects that I'm show to, showing to you today and she did an amazing job with this one and I love the quilting that she did on it. It looks it looks spectacular. This is a quick view of the back here. It's just uh, musical notes that I put on the back to kind of correspond with the music, musicality of and the musical experience that you would have with it. Um, you'll notice on the top here if you are unfamiliar, unfamiliar with quilting uh, and putting a sleeve onto your quilt, um, whenever you put it into competition or show or something like that, you have to put on a, uh, a sleeve so that way the pole can fit or the pole goes back behind there and it hangs your quilt up on whatever the, whatever they're going to be using. Cause there could be a pole, there could, there's lots of things. It gets a little complicated, but anyways, um, so basically, this is just allowing it to hang on the wall or hang on whatever yeah, whatever instruments they're going to be using to hold this quilt up. Uh, so that's what that's for. And then it also has, whoops, where'd it go? It has a quilt block or information block here on the back. The specific one that I was in wanted to have a cover on it so that way they couldn't see, the judges couldn't see who uh, whose quilt it was or where it came from. Um, so that way they could be as unbiased as possible. But I have the information about the quilt, where it was created, all that kind of stuff. So um, so that's that. Pretty simple design, nothing too crazy. It's really focusing in on the technology. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how it works. Whenever you take a closer look at this quilt, you'll notice that right on each one of these shapes, there is a larger area of zigzag kind of stitching going on. And that's because this is the conductive thread. This is what actually allows the electricity to flow through it. You'll see it over here on the side as well. I had to stitch it into the quilt itself in order for it to follow the path to the Makey Makey device. I'm gonna zoom back out so that way you can see most of the quilt. This is unfortunately uh, a little larger than what I can fit up here on my desk, so it's a little a little off. But anyways, basically what happens here is you have your handprint or an image of a hand and you take your hand and put it here. 
and then you use your other hand to um, touch one of the musical notes and the electricity follows these paths down to the Makey Makey device. This is a keyboard emulator. It pretends to be the keyboard and whenever it pretends to be that keyboard it hooks into the computer and I'm using a program called SoundPlant where I can literally um, assign a sound cue to a, uh, a part of the keyboard. Um, you could even play like if you wanted to set up a regular QWERTY keyboard as a piano you could do that so basically you're just assigning specific so sounds to specific keys and on this one I have four notes because we have four arrow keys and those are the easiest ones to map out because as you notice down here on the Makey Makey here are the arrow keys right here so it's very easy to map them out and figure out their location on the back side of the Makey Makey you can actually access the um, other spots there are more keys there so if I want to access like the W key or the A key I could do that on the back of it but since this conductive thread does not it's not like regular wire and it won't nicely incorporate into those ports I went ahead and just did them on the um, the arrow pad right here so basically what happens is you put your hand um, you don't even have to put your whole hand you can just put some of the some portion of it as long as some portion of your hand is touching it the electricity is actually flowing through my hand through my arm through my body and then whenever I touch another um, piece I complete that connection and the electricity flows back into the system and it registers as a key press like as if you were pushing the keys on the keyboard now you'll notice that I can actually touch up here I can touch down here I can pretty much touch anywhere on these pieces of uh, material because it's a conductive material which means it allows the electricity to pass through it um, I'm not exactly sure what the properties of this material are I think it might be some sort of like carbon maybe or I, I don't know I don't know the exact properties that allows it but it's it's almost like a heavy trash bag material and that um, whatever it's made with allows that electricity to actually th flow through it and it's very small amounts of electricity we're not dealing with a massive amount of electricity because obviously we wouldn't want to uh, zap ourselves or hurt ourselves so basically that electricity is a very very small signal that's going through all the system and registering as a key press um, not my best sewing job I will admit that there are some flaws in it and um, it's hard to it's really hard to use a conductive thread because it really does not take bends or curves very well you have to do it pretty straight on so that's why you see whenever I put this together I'm using pretty much straight lines I had to curve this line because I originally had taken this one down further and I wanted to miss it, miss the other shapes so I had to curve this one down in order to get it into the right pattern it's it's very complicated but it's all dealing with electricity you don't want to short circuit a system by crossing it over and for this one you'll notice that there's no path coming from it that's because I had to go inside the quilt to take it down to the ground this is your ground connection and it cannot touch any of the other lines or uh, or images without causing problems you would end up having a constant connection the circuit would always be closed on whatever it was touching so I decided to go inside the quilt and then over and back up through the bottom of the quilt so lots of complicated thinking things out and this was just a first go at this just to prove to myself that I could do this so that's why it's you know it looks okay but it's definitely not as nice as I would have liked it to have been it will be something I hope to come back to and create a nicer more polished version of this in the future maybe add more keys uh, more information or something so this was just kind of the start of it and this is where it's starting at and we'll go from here I think one of the funniest stories about this quilt is when I brought it into the North Texas Quilt Festival to um, 
deliver it for them to start entering it into the show and putting it up and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the ladies, I set down this big red bin that had the quilt inside and I have some awesome people in my guild that were helping me with this process so they already knew what was coming. They knew how it was going to be handled and all that kind of stuff but these other ladies from other guilds didn't quite know what was going on so I set my container down and it's a big big red like storage container and they're kind of looking at it and they're like what is that and I'm like well it's my quilt and this is this is how you this is how I'm turning it in and they're like well you're supposed to have it you know there's rules on how you're supposed to put your quilts in and all that kind of stuff and I was definitely defying those rules uh, and so I'm like well this is this this one needs to be in this one this, this is a special quilt and I kind of pull it out and I show them and I, I don't have it connected up to the computer so I can't actually have it interact or see, have them see it work in action um, and so they're kind of looking it over and they kind of look up at me and they're like you're one of those modern quilters aren't you <laughs> I thought that was a really funny moment uh, they ended up I think I hope they came by the booth because this quilt ended up being in the Modern Quilt Guild's uh, booth during the actual show. It hung up on the wall for judging and then was in the booth itself during the show. And I think the ladies were able to kind of see how it works and understand why this was a, a, a very special quilt. All in all, I was very proud of this one and I love the reactions that I got from it. I saw some videos. I wasn't able to attend the quilt festival but I was able to see some videos of people interacting with it and having fun with it and uh, they really seem to have a good time with it. The next quilt I want to talk about is one that I designed first of all here in Design Space. I used a simple triangle shape to create it so basically um, I elongated this triangle shape just like I'm doing here. Um, nothing too fancy, it really is pretty easy just to manipulate the image around and get it as you can see kind of similar to what I have here. Anyways, so that's basically what I did to create this. I just used those, I took that shape and then copied it and turned it into uh, the different colors. I didn't quite know what I was doing with quilting and I didn't realize how hard and difficult this pattern would be, but I went ahead and charged forward and um, some of the other ladies in the Fort Worth Quilt Guild were amazed by the Cricut and how easily it cut all of the materials out. This whole quilt was definitely hard to sew together and hard to get a grasp on how to make it work correctly and lay correctly and all of that. So I feel like if I ever did this quilt again, I would have to make some modifications to it. It definitely did not end up quilting or sewing the way I wanted it to, but I think it all in all looks pretty good. So this is the final product that I made with the Cricut, and as you can see I did several rows of those triangles. Um, I think it came out really well. It's not a full-sized quilt, like I, this is more of a wall-hanging art piece kind of quilt rather than actual like snuggle up kind of blanket quilt. Uh, it's got the, um, I can't, don't know if you can tell, it's got some variegated thread on it that is a rainbow and then um, it has this like concrete or kind of, uh, what would you call that, like concrete, I feel like it looks like concrete, that's what I'm going with at least. Anyways, uh, so the name of this one is LGBTQ Bridge, um, so I wanted it to kind of look like a bridge and if I back it up a little bit, you can kind of see it kind of looks like a bridge or at least a, a representation of a bridge. Uh, again, Trish did a wonderful job with the quilting. She did some wonderful variegated thread. Um, there are some mistakes in it. There are some inaccuracies. It was very strange as I was quilting this one because um, the triangles, whenever I would sew one side of the triangles, the points would be just fine. Like everything laid correctly and nicely. But when I would do the other set, and I don't remember which way is which, um, the ends, the points would like curl up in weird ways. And so on this one, let me see if I can find an example of it. There were parts where there were like exposed edges that were coming through, and I don't know why. So I think this is the side, looking at it, I think this is the side right here that ended up working out okay. It was this side that had the, had the problems. Um, where I had, yeah, so I don't know if the camera's even going to be able to pick this up. Let me see if I can get it where it will. <laughs> Can't even imagine how 
So there's a little bit of a raw edge sticking out right about there. So that raw edge is sticking out and I think there's a couple more around on the quilt. Yeah, oh, this one is definitely one. And I know you're not supposed to show your inaccuracies in it, but um, I want you to know that it's okay not to be perfect and that sometimes perfection is, it's not, it doesn't happen and that's okay. So don't feel bad if your quilt comes out like mine or if you have a project that comes out like mine where it's not perfect. I'm very happy with this. I can't wait to hang this up again. It has a sleeve on the back of it. I used the same material this time, so that way it blended in a little bit better. And we have the quilt block down there. Um, for judging, I uncovered it, um, went ahead and took the pins out and just uncovered it. So yeah, it looks really good and I like it. It is a little wrinkled because I've had it folded up. I'm waiting to get the right spot for it. And I also want to take some pictures with it because um, all good quilters know you have to have good Instagram photos, right? <laughs> That's the way it works. But anyways, so um, yeah, all in all, I think it came out really good and I like how it looks. Um, when it was hanging up in the show, I felt like it, it fit in really well with some of the other ones. It is a modern quilt because it's not a typical pattern. In fact, this is my own pattern design, which I'm pretty proud of. So all in all, I think it came out nice and uh, it's a piece of work that I am proud of and I, I can't wait to display and put up, um, put up on the walls. So as you can see, my Cricut Maker has really inspired me to try out new art forms and to really expand my boundaries and think outside the box. I did forget to mention whenever I did the conductive thread quilt, the um, proof of concept quilt, that was actually cut, all those shapes were cut on the maker using the rotary blade. So I was able to cut the conductive material using the rotary blade. And then I used the rotary blade again to cut those triangles out for the uh, rainbow quilt. So it's really opened up doors for me. It's opened up a brand new experience for me in quilting. Uh, I have always enjoyed sewing and all that kind of stuff. And this is taking it to another level. Um, there are a lot of great people who are now incorporating technology into their quilts. So um, a crafter that I follow or a quilter that I follow is uh, Libs, Libs Elliot, I think is her name, Libs Elliot. Uh, shout out to her because she actually came to talk to the Fort Worth Modern Quilt Guild and it was amazing because she uses code, a code generator to create the layout of uh, the colors and fabrics and stuff like that and then she takes that pattern and will sew a quilt that looks like it and her patterns are really amazing and that's kind of what kept me at the Fort Worth Modern Quilt Guild meetings. Um, I That was the second meeting that I went to and I was kind of like, well, do I really want to stick with the guild. First meeting was fun, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to continue on with it. And once I saw her quilt and how she put them together and all that kind of stuff, I was like, yes, I need to stick with this and create some really cool stuff. So I'm very glad that I went down this avenue and I, you know, it's, it's really, really great that I'm getting exposed to these brand new quilting and um, crafting techniques that I would not have thought of originally. In Cricut Design Space, there are several quilt patterns. Um, honestly, they look more like traditional quilting to me, and so I'm not really fond of that more block style, but I'm hoping to use my Cricut Maker in the future to create some more patterns and some more um, designs, so that way I can continue on with this. Um, a lot of fun and a lot of great just getting in and sewing. <laughs> I definitely think though that I'm a modern quilter and not a traditional quilter. I love the modern designs and will continue working in that direction. So I hope you have enjoyed this little show and share. I know this isn't like one of my typical videos, but I really wanted to talk about my artwork from this and kind of show that there's a whole world of new experiences that are hopefully coming as technology becomes more incorporated into daily life. I have a lot of great ideas crossing my fingers that I can figure out how to make them work, but I have more ideas how to incorporate conductive thread into other projects and we'll be continuing on that avenue in the future. Also, if you are in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and are interested in getting into quilting or want 
to be a part of the quilting world, or if you're an experienced quilter and are looking for something new, come check us out at the Fort Worth Modern Quilt Guild. I will leave a link to the information for their monthly meetings down in the description below. I'm also going to leave a link to their Facebook page if you're interested in joining us. It's a lot of fun. The ladies are a blast, and we definitely have a good time each meeting. Even if you're not located here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and you're interested in modern quilting, make sure to check out there may be a modern quilt guild in your area, somewhere, location, something like that. So make sure to look in your area and see if there's some sort of modern quilt guild or modern quilting in your area. And of course there are just traditional quilt guilds all over the United States and you can definitely check out and see if you want to be a part of it. If you have an interest in quilting or just want to learn more about it, Go talk to your Quilt Guild and find out more. And don't forget that Quilt Con will be in Nashville, Tennessee next year, 2019, and I'm very excited. I'm hoping, I'm crossing my fingers, that I get to go to it, but I'm not sure. So it's a little far off for me to figure it out at this moment, but hopefully I will be able to go and I would love to take some classes while I'm there. Alright guys, thank you for sticking around for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below if you want to see more of these kind of show and share videos. I definitely enjoy showing off what I'm working on and what I've accomplished, but not exactly sure how y'all, my audience, are responsive to it. So if you want to see more like this, please let me know and I want to hear from you. Also guys, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, hit that button down below that says subscribe. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and get great updates every time I post a new video by clicking the bell icon. That's I think, at least for this week, the only way that you get notifications that I've either gone live or posted a new video here on YouTube, they keep changing it up on us, but do yourself a favor, if you want to know when my videos get posted or go live, hit that bell icon and it'll let you know. You can also check out my social media links, I've become a lot more active on Instagram, so if you're interested and want to see maybe even behind the scenes on what's going on, check out my Instagram, also Twitter, Facebook, and more. Those are all listed down in the description below. All right, guys, I think that's going to do it for today. I hope everybody has a great day. And remember, normal's just a setting on your dryer. Bye.